deadline expires, I'll tell you which QB the Raiders should pursue to get the silver and black back on track. Now, Tim, my follicle challenge friend, what you got for us? Carson Palmer led his team on a comfort behind win on the road in Baltimore. Is he our number one QB in the clutch? You have to stick around to find out because NFL Live starts right now. Hey, that's how we roll into the latest edition of NFL Live. Mike Hill hanging out with TNT, Tim and Trent. Tim Hasselbeck and Trent Dilfer, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Had another wild Monday night football matchup, thanks in part to Miami's Wildcat offense. Jets and Dolphins, this one was a wild one. Braylon Edwards making his Jets debut, but Ronnie Brown, the Dolphins' Wildcat offense, would be the story early. Opening drive, Wildcat formation here, throwing for the first time this season out of the Wildcat. Ronnie Brown to Anthony Fasano, 21 yards. Next play out of the Wildcat again. Brown off to Ricky Williams, and Ricky Williams has found the fountain of youth, fellas. 17-yard gain leads to a Brown touchdown, 7-0 Dolphins. Meanwhile, how about Braylon Edwards in his debut? Yeah, nice start, immediate impact. What I love about this play is they put him in the slot. They work him to get open, and I love the fact on the catch, he gets the ball away from the defender. Tim spinning it around for us. Well, some confusion in the secondary of the Miami Dolphins trying to in and out the coverage, but when it becomes a trip set, there's some confusion. Braylon Edwards able to get inside Will Allen for the touchdown. Meanwhile, Mark Sanchez able to bounce back from his poor outing against New Orleans in the fourth quarter. It was a wild quarter. Sanchez going deep, founds David Clowney, 53 yards. It's a big time throw. That would set up this in Edwards and people in Cleveland like, where was this in Cleveland with Edwards? Where was this in Cleveland? On Monday nights it was there. <laughs> Check this out. Nice grab right there. It was ruled a touchdown. Dolphins call for a review. Take another look. Look at how great of a catch this was, fellas. Great body control. Moment of truth. Going up and getting it to the highest point and then having the awareness to get his feet down. This is why you go get a Braylon Edwards. Edwards five catches, 64 yards in his debut. Jets took the lead, but it will go back and forth in Sue and Dolphins possession. Henny, Ted getting junior. How did he beat three Jets? Well, very simply, double move on the best corner in football. Inside release, shows a crossing route, gets vertical right now maintains his angle and it always helps when the quarterback drops a dime in there for six. So the Dolphins retake the lead but back come the Jets in Sue in possession. Sanchez over the middle to Edwards and this is a little bit of a controversial play right here. Yeah look they call pass interference certainly didn't see interference especially on the replay but again Braylon Edwards drawing attention down the field. Thomas Jones three yard touchdown on the next play. Jets take the lead 27-24 but the Dolphins weren't through it. They gave him too much time left. Five minutes left. Ball on Narrow 38, it's the Wildcat. Williams lined up in the shotgun, and he's going to take the direct snap, and they're making it work for 15 yards right here. The physicality up front with the offensive line, tight ends, and fullbacks moving the line of scrimmage, setting the tempo on this last drive. Then Henny goes to the sideline. Pat White comes in for the first time all game. How tough is that, Tim? Listen, it's hard. You've been standing on the sidelines for three and a half quarters. Now you get put into the game in a crucial situation, and then they're going to ask you to make a play. An excellent job of Pat White staying mentally into the game and physically as well. A gain of six right here. Another first down for Pat White. Interesting play called by Tony Sperano. Two minutes left. Henny back under center, and Henny did his job in his second career start. First on Monday Night Football, third and five for the Jets, 30. Seven defenders coming at him. Look at the poise. Casino blitz means they're all in on defense. You got to make a great throw in Chad Henny steps up and makes back-to-back great throws on third down. The third and five we just saw. Then they change the launch point and get the ball to the sideline to Camarillo. Two great plays. Henny, 20 and 26, 241 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, and 10 seconds left. Third and goal from the two out of the Wildcat. It's Brown. That's your game winner. They drive 70 yards, five minutes, six seconds left off the clout. Caught Dolphins win it 31 27. His reaction after was starting with hitting. This is incredible, you know. Uh, you always dream of as a kid, you know, these situations come down, comebacks. You know, I watched Joe Montana when I was a kid, you know, come back, Joe, and, you know, it's great to be a part of that and uh, be a part of this win. First off, a complete embarrassment. Um, you know, by our defense and, and by me, that uh, obviously we got to prepare better. Um, I never had the defense prepared the way they should be. I'll take full responsibility for that. We just got to play a hell of a lot better than we did today. And again, that's that's my responsibility. It's also my responsibility to get this team ready to go next week against Buffalo.
Let's take it to the next level with the Dolphins and that Wildcat offense. Miami ran out of the formation 16 times, the team high for the last two seasons. Gained 110 yards with it, the most they've had in the game since amassing 119 in Week 3, the first time we saw it against the Patriots last season. And on the final drive, of course, the Dolphins ran it four times for 25 yards, ending up with that game-winning score. Yeah, somebody like Rex Ryan using embarrassment with his defense. His defense has been solid all season long. Dolphins very effective with that Wildcat. Why was that offense so effective last night against that Jets defense? Well, I think a big part of the reason is not only that Wildcat, but the personnel groupings that Dan Henning used to keep Rex Ryan and that defense out of what they do best, which is create confusion when you try to spread them out. And what he did was he unconventional personnel groupings. This is a short yardage personnel grouping on first and 10 to start the game, and they're not going to run out of it. They're going to drop back and throw the ball, and Chad Henney does a nice job of getting through his progression, getting the ball down to a check down, Ronnie Brown, and then he's able to pick up a first down. Look at this. This is a goal line personnel grouping in the middle of the field plus a running back. That's how you do it, and you're still playing against base defense for the New York Jets. You also have a fullback outside blocking on a corner. He's able to set that, uh, that point and really get Ricky Williams down the field. An excellent job by Dan Henning, and then when they got the ball back with five minutes left in the game, they were able to stay in their base offense and not get away from the plan. It was an excellent job sticking to the plan even when the game was on the line. Jets defense allowed season highs in first down and passing yards. A big reason why they allowed uh, uh, season high in passing yards because play of Chad Henney, second-year player getting the job done. Rex Ryan said his defense made him look like Dan Reno. I don't know about that, but what impressed you about him last night? Well, the hardest thing to do as a quarterback is to sit there and hand the ball off all game long, get no rhythm whatsoever, and then be asked to come in and bail your team out with the pass when you have no rhythm, like I said. And Chan Hitty, when he was asked to throw, had great poise. You know, you don't see the field the same when you haven't been throwing it all day long, but Chad Henney, as he's asked to throw the ball, makes perfect reads, reads underneath the fender, takes him to a second read of progression, makes an accurate throw to the tight end, and then play action. The nice poise, let the route develop, keep his eyes down the middle, pick a guy, let it fly, and end up throwing a big touchdown. They all set up their hair on the route, they show the four route, then they go high to the post, Chad Henney waits for it patiently and tosses a dime and then love changing the launch point. This is not easy when you haven't been doing it all game long. Nice, accurate throw to the sideline, low and away. My team's going to get it. Their team isn't. I already got the, the field goal in the bank. So impressed how Chad Henney responded after not getting into a rhythm early on. All right, of course, Chad Pennington out for the season. Now you got Chad Henney. You can do a lot more things with Henney as opposed to Pennington, like throwing the ball downfield. What kind of uh, advantage does he give them the rest of the way uh, for this Miami Dolphins? Well, thing? I think you mentioned it, the explosive plays in that offense. You know, when Chad Pennington was the quarterback, he was making good decisions both in the run game and the passing game, but no explosive plays down the field. And when you saw that last night, they needed a big play. Chad Henney has the ability to give them the big play down the field by throwing the ball deep. 20 of 26, 241 yards, two touchdowns, most importantly, no picks. You mm. don't want the youngsters turning no the football sacks over. Either. Yeah, we'll see what kind of adjustments they make when these two teams uh, hook up again in just three weeks. Much more ahead on NFL Live. You have to be money to grab the attention of our two quarterbacks or have some money. Trent and Tim roll back the game film and rank week five's top clutch quarterbacks. And the trade deadline is one week away, and several notable names could be on the trading block. John Clayton separates fact from fiction. This is Live. leaving the ring, still talking, and I reckon he'll be talking all the way home, and I reckon he'll be talking in his sleep tonight, and that man will never, ever stop talking. For over two decades, Muhammad Ali shook up the world with his robust rhetoric and forged some of the most electrifying fights ever. Never afraid to stand up for what he believed in, the beast stung and sometimes got bitter, but he never gave up the fight. He called himself the greatest, and he probably was. We bring you his best bouts, both inside and outside the ring. Ali, in October, on ESPN Classic. The Cardinals take on the Steelers. Looking for an unprecedented sixth Super Bowl ring, the Steelers played a dominant first half. Picked up, James Harrison Andrew. He's running up the sideline, and that's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Unflappable Cardinals engineered a fourth quarter comeback with Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, he got it! Fires over the middle of the fence, caught at the 45 50. 
Fitzgerald after a quiet first half has become a force here in the second half. 2.31 left. Steelers have two timeouts. They trail by three. He scrambles around, throws it back corner of the end zone. Santonio Holmes! I don't know how he did it! Roethlisberger looked to the right, to the left, back to the right, and then threw it into the very corner of the end zone. The confetti's all in the air. This was a great one, and the Steelers prevail. NFL on ESPN America. At six foot four and 262 pounds, Cowboys linebacker Demarcus Ware is an opposing offense's nightmare. Solid against the run in the pass, Ware is a dominating pass rusher, recording 53 and a half sacks in four NFL seasons. His 14 sacks were the third most in the NFL in 2007, and his 20 sacks led the league in 2008. Steelers coach Mike Tomlin said Tuesday that Troy Polamalu and Willie Parker expected to practice on Wednesday. Polamalu, of course, has been out since the opener with a knee injury, while Parker has been battling turf toe the past couple of games. And defensive end Aaron Smith has a right shoulder injury that Tomlin says potentially could be significant. Meanwhile, Raiders coach Tom Cable says the key to the Raiders turning things around is eliminating distractions. However, the coach says he doesn't think his alleged training camp assault of former assistant Randy Hansen is one. Of course not. No. Now, how does Commissioner Roger Goodell feel about it, though? Well, I understand it's been handed over to the district attorney, um, so they've completed the investigative standpoint uh, stage of this, and they will make some determination in the next couple of weeks of uh, whether there will be next steps. And uh, at some point, we will be able to get a report on what their findings were, and at that stage, we'll make a determination of what our next step is. You know, I've been clear about the fact that everybody's held to that personal conduct, including yours truly, and uh, and. So we would want to make sure that that is uh, the same standard being held to everybody, including Coach Cable. Meanwhile, his team is 16th against the rush, but Coach owner Jim Irsay is now first against the rush. The first owners to say he wouldn't vote against, would vote for a rush and Limbaugh to bid the Rams, by the Rams. You, you get what I'm saying? He wouldn't do it. Irsay joining activist Al Sharpton and several players against that. Mish had this to say earlier. The views of, of a lot of people, most importantly, are players, and I've talked to players, so I understand the issue of the players and uh, the comments that, that Rush made specifically about Donovan, uh, I disagree with very strongly. And uh, uh, that's, it's, a, it's a polarizing comments that we don't think uh, reflect accurately on the NFL or our players. And. Uh, uh, I don't obviously do not believe that those comments uh, are positive uh, and they're divisive and that's a that's a negative thing for us so uh, but I disagree with those comments very uh, strongly and I've told the players that. Now despite the loss nice Jets debut for Braylon Edwards the receiver making an immediate impact with five catches some of the spectacular variety 64 yards in his first touchdown of the season even set up another by forcing a disputed pass interference call on Will Allen of course the trade deadline is just a week away so other players could be out there looking players here are some significant players who were traded on an unlike baseball or hockey a big name occasionally moves in season in the NFL not often Edwards was traded from the Browns to the Jets last week and let's uh, not forget the big deal last year that I saw wide receiver Roy Williams move from Detroit to Dallas. All right, guys, we got our two quarterbacks with us in the house, of course, today. So it's time for them to give you their quarterbacks in the clutch. Now, I don't know if you knew, but I played quarterback in the Air Force. You've in told the us. Philippines, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we times. got three here. So Multiple times. For, for this purposes, we're just going to let you give your quarterbacks in the clutch. There you go. Well, you started off, Divi. Well, look, let's talk number five. And coming in at number five is number four, Brett Favre. Look at this throw here. Coming off of the play action on the run, a corner out on the run in between two defenders, an absolute laser by Brett Favre on the run. Percy Harvey been almost able to get in the end zone. And number four, I'm going with Mark Sanchez. We call this the back high line, high corner. He's going to set an angle, lets the quarterback know where the receiver's going, you give it a lot of air, and let him run underneath the ball. This is an absolute definition of a dime right in the numbers over the shoulder. Mark Sanchez, number four. Number three is going to be that high angle pylon throw. This time it's going to be done by another New York quarterback, Eli Manning, stepping up into the pocket. He'll not a problem again. High angle, seven route, back pylon, perfect throw to Mario Manningham. 
Number two, we're going with young Chad Henney, and it's not a glamorous play, but you got Casino Blitz. The Jets are all in. The quarterback knows he's going to get hit. He changes trajectory and ball speed to drop that ball in their great throw. And on the road, Carson Palmer doing an excellent job in the clutch, looking off Ray Lewis, finding Caldwell in the seam for the touchdown. Absolutely beautiful play in the most critical moment of the game. He knows he's got to get Ray Lewis to move so he can get the ball in the slot. Carson Palmer drops back, eyes hard left, hard left, getting Ray Lewis to settle his feet and then delivers a strike in the middle to win the football game on the road. What a football play by Carson Palmer. Of course, that is why they are now in first place in the AFC North getting the job done. Uh, very exciting games, very exciting quarterbacks to, you know, three, all three of us. All three of us. Can I ask you want it. Some you want plays it. here? You got it. It's yours. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're moving on. So the idea was to get the band to play that fight song. Because it reaches deep. It kind of still does. Hey, you don't want to miss a sneak peek at the band that wouldn't die. All for ESPN's 30 for 30 documentary series about the Colts' sudden departure from Baltimore. It's coming up next. There are moments when time seems to stop and the world holds its breath. Life isn't measured by the number of breaths you take, but by the moments that take your breath away. Celebrate those moments with ESPN Classic, the official FIFA World Cup films on ESPN Classic. Sunday Night Football on ESPN America. Sunday Night Countdown gets you ready for a live triple header. Then we're in Minnesota as Brett Favre and the Vikings host the Ravens. The Titans look to get back on track in New England. He's got the ball. That's a touchdown. And the Falcons face the Bears in Atlanta. Live Sunday Night Football only on ESPN America. I'm trying to retain what little dignity I have left in this matter. And second, if the Colts had to sneak out of town at night, it degrades a great tradition of the city in football. And I guess the third thing would be, I hate to see a, a man cry. Another great documentary tonight in the ESPN 30 for 30 series. The band that wouldn't die debuts on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern. It's the story of the Baltimore Colts band that continued to be a big part of the community even after the Colts rolled out in those Mayflower trucks. It's directed by Barry Levinson, a heavyweight in the TV and film industry, so let's put Barry on Bioblast. Born and raised in Baltimore, he's an Academy Award-winning director, screenwriter, and producer. Among the notable films he directed, Diner, The Natural, and Good Morning Vietnam. Levinson also was awarded the 1988 Best Director Oscar for Rain Man, starring Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. Our Rain Man, Trey Wingo, caught up with the director on Monday. This movie, like a lot of your movies, deals with your hometown of Baltimore. What is it about the love affair you seem to have in cinema with the place where you grew up? Well, I mean, it's irrational, I guess, in some way, you know, but, you know, look, when I was a kid, my father had season tickets and I went to the Colts game when they first came to Baltimore. And until I went off to college, I went to every game, you know, so I was a big, you know, fan. And when I heard that the Colts packed up and left in the middle of the night, you know, it was devastating. A lot of people didn't know is that they had a they had a marching band, right. and the marching band marched for 12 years without a team. And when I would tell people about it, they go, "What do you mean they marched without a team?" I said, "They march. They continue to march at picnics or whatever have you." And this John Zeman mortgaged his house. He did all these things to keep that band alive in hopes of getting another franchise. Uh, how much of of you was was taken away when the Colts left? Well, I mean, it was devastating. And but but here's the thing, you know, other. 
you know, franchises have moved. But there has never been a, a visual component to it. Everybody can remember if you say Colts moving out of town, you know, snowy night, Mayflower moving vans, packing it up to leave. It's, it's locked in there, you know. We don't know about when the Rams left L.A. Right. There's, there is no emotional or visual emotional element. The Ravens act, have now come to Baltimore and they've done very well. They've won a Super Bowl. Will it ever be, do you think, in the city of Baltimore, what it was for the Colts? Well, I mean, I think, look, Baltimore is a great football town. Right. And, you know, the Ravens uh, get huge fan support. And, you know, people are as crazy about the, the Ravens as they were about the Colts. The difference is that um, to those who grew up with the Colts, they're still going to have that, uh, that, that soft spot. You know, to the, to the Baltimore people, not only they lose the team, but they cease to exist. They're, it's not in the Hall of Fame. There, there is no Baltimore Colts. So the people is like, there was a team here. There was a right. team. And now they're like suddenly trying to erase the history of it. So in Baltimore, um, you know, that, that was a, a real, real, sore, real sore point. Yeah, it's not like we're talking about an expansion team. We're talking about Johnny Unitas' team, Alan Amici. They played in the greatest game in the history of the NFL, the overtime win over the New York Giants. The film is The Band That Refused to Die, Tuesday night, right here on ESPN. Barry, thanks for being with us. Pleasure. As Trey said, don't forget, it's The Band That Wouldn't Die, presented by Levi's, part of the 30 for 30 ESPN series. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN, also at 11 Eastern on ESPN2. Here's something that won't make Baltimore fans happy. The Indianapolis Colts remain number one in the NFL power rankings. Find out which team has crashed the top five for the first time this season. Stick around, NFL Live continues. Sunday Night Football on ESPN America. Sunday Night Countdown gets you ready for a live triple header. Then we're in Minnesota as Brett Favre and the Vikings host the Ravens. The Titans look to get back on track in New England. He's got the ball, that's a touchdown. And the Falcons face the Bears in Atlanta. Live Sunday Night Football, only on ESPN America. Monday Night Football on ESPN America. Touchdown! Kick off your week with live NFL. Monday Night Countdown gets you ready for the big game. Then, it's showtime. It's an AFC West face-off as the Broncos battle the Chargers for divisional domination. Live Monday Night Football, only on ESPN America. The big game is back. College football, all season long on ESPN America. It's where athletes become machines, where spirit counts the most, and where blood runs gold and green. See all the action from your favorite teams and watch tomorrow's legends play in games today. College football is back all season long on ESPN America. Last night, the Jets had done a very good job of containing the opposing quarterback and the guys they faced, Matt Schaub, Tom Brady, Kerry Collins, Drew Brees, are veterans with solid reputations. How about Chad Henney in his second NFL star, torching the green and white by throwing for 241 yards and two touchdowns. Meanwhile, in that same game, Braylon Edwards made an impact for his team. Five catches, 64 yards, first touchdown of the season. Of course, just traded uh, last week from the Browns. Trade deadline a week away, and John Clayton with some other big-name players who could possibly be on the move. I don't see major trades happening. I don't see anything happening with Brady Quinn in Cleveland. I don't see anything happening with Terrell Owens in Buffalo. The type of trades you're going to probably see are more of a Roscoe Parrish type of trade. You're not going to see the big names because it's in many ways a little bit too late to try to do something, particularly with the deadline coming up on Tuesday. Quiggins, former Giants wide receiver David Tyree, of course, a part of the most famous play in Super Bowl history, cut short his visit to Tampa, returned to Baltimore, and he signed with the Ravens. He is expected. Well, he did it today, and that is uh, a new receiver now for Joe Flacco with the Baltimore Ravens. Despite reports that had Tony Dungy discussing a possible undetermined role in the Bucs organization, the former coach tells our Chris Mortensen uh, he has not been contacted and does not know anything about it. Other news and those Patriots news, Junior Seau is back with the New England Patriots. How come you guys aren't playing football? And Junior Seau continues to come back, coming out of retirement for a third time to sign a contract Tuesday for a 20th season as an NFL linebacker. And according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, team sources say uh, Patriots left tackle Matt Light, no ligament damage in his right knee or ankle. Light was injured during Sunday's 2017 overtime loss to the Broncos. No change in the top 
of the ESPN.com Power Rankings. In fact, the top four teams remain unchanged with the Colts holding down the top spot for the second week in a row. Broncos move from eighth to fifth after their thrilling win over the Patriots. No need to play that's this good. week. We yeah, know who good. the best teams are. That's that's all that matters. They got a bye. And the best we also team know has who a bye. The, 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 the Rams are on 30 seconds. So five teams remain unbeaten as we head into week six. You can check out the entire list of power rankings one through 32 now on ESPN.com. <laughs> All right, fellas, time for some hurry up right now. We, really, we got three teams uh, in the contention for the AFC East right now. But who is the team to beat in the AFC East right now? It's the New England Patriots. They're the class of not only division, but of the league. I know they're only three and two, but they they they, they just get it. They're going to be good at the end. And I agree with you because the play at the quarterback position, Tom Brady, he will play better. He, he's missed some throws, mm -hmm. which is very uncharacteristic. He's going to be more accurate, and that offense will be better. All right, once again, the trade deadline is a week from today. There are some players who could be on the move, some teams who might need some players. So which team should make a deal before the deadline? the Oakland Raiders should make a move and go get Brady Quinn from the Cleveland Browns. It makes a lot of sense. Low salary this year if he doesn't play a whole lot. He's a professional. He's a grinder. And the biggest thing, Tim, this offseason, they don't need to blow up the whole thing. Draft another guy because they've proven they don't know how to draft a quarterback. Now, I'm going to take a different route. I'm going to say a team should trade a player and get rid of him, and I think the Bills should get rid of T.O. Not that he's the problem in Buffalo, but look, you you added a guy and you're paying him six million bucks. It's not like he's the final piece to the puzzle. You scored three points against the Cleveland Browns. Go ahead, get That's a pick good. for a guy. It's horrible. Okay. Get a pick for a guy that you're not going to re-sign next year. All right, we shall see what happens. Of course, the, the trade deadline is a week from today. One other note, reserve running back Patrick Cobbs of the Dolphins we missed the rest of the season. He's mm. got a torn ACL, so that's a big blow to that Wildcat package. We are back at 7 o'clock Eastern time right here on ESPN2. For Tim, for Trent, I'm Mike, the third quarterback on his team. Make it. There are moments when time seems to stop and the world...